Member statements. I recognize the member for Oakville North, Burlington. Good morning, Speaker. Speaker, the 2024 Volunteer Service Awards took place last week to recognize thousands of volunteers across the province for their countless hours of dedicated service. This is Ontario's premier event, and I'm so pleased today to highlight the eight outstanding members from my community of Oakville North, Burlington. Three individuals with five years of service are Panaga Adija with the Sinjeri Vidai Bharati Foundation Canada, Thomas Aro with the 23rd Division Community Policing Liaison Committee, Toronto Police Services, Denise Nogushi with Global Medic, the David Anthony Gibson Foundation. For 25 years of service, she can lead with the 38th Mississauga Scout Group. Also for 35 years of service, Edward Anzaroski with the Knights of Columbus, and youth recipients Frank Liu, Jessica Wang, and Michael Yu from the Oakville Chinese Network Society. Speaker, I believe we can all agree that volunteers are the heart and soul of communities, driving positive change, fostering connections, and making our province a better place for everyone. Congratulations to these worthy recipients, and thank you for all you do to support our community. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Toronto Centre. Thank you very much, Speaker. Today I rise to address an issue affecting Jewish constituents and members of my chosen family. They shared their growing fears watching the rise of anti-Semitic hate. Their experiences are not just troubling, they are a call to action. No Ontarian should live in fear, yet hate crimes have more than doubled since 2018, shaking the foundation of inclusivity and safety that every Ontarian deserves. The fear among Jewish Ontarians echoes the horrors and living me memories of the Holocaust. From knowing what broken glass to graffiti of swastikas or echoes of blood libel means, Jewish people have survived by recognizing anti-Semitism. Now this pain exists alongside a rise in anti-Arab and anti-Muslim hate that has all increased with the taking of hostages by Hamas and the bombing of Gaza. Ontarians need compassionate leadership that heals wounds and fosters a province where everyone feels safe. Ontarians need, Ontarians need more than words of solidarity. They need a funded and community-informed province-wide hate strategy to build deep social unity. This plan must include robust education to combat anti-Semitism and enhance coordination between law enforcement to tackle actual hate crimes. This legislature must ask itself two questions. What can we do to effectively stop anti-Semitism and hate crimes in Ontario? And how can our divided communities start talking again and heal together? Combating anti-Semitism in all forms of hate requires everyone and every order of government to do their part. Let's rise to this challenge together. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Speaker, <clears throat> and it's an honour once again to rise in the Ontario Legislature to share more good news and an important investment by this government, Sarnia Lambton. Mr. Speaker, just this past Friday, I was honoured to join Paula Rion Zimmer, the CEO of Blue Water Health, Mark Brake, Chair of the Blue Water Health Foundation, and Petroleum Mayor Brad Lusa to announce that the Blue Water Health Charlotte Eleanor Inglehart Hospital in Petroleum has been given the green light by the Ministry of Health to move forward with a multi-million dollar upgrade and expansion of this hospital, including the long-awaited expansion of the emergency and radiology department. Friday's announcement means that Blue Water Health will immediately begin the final detailed design work for the hospital expansion, with construction beginning as early as 2025. Mr. Speaker, as a hard oiler and lifelong resident of the town of Petrolia, I can't overstate how important the redevelopment of the CE Hospital project is to the residents of Petrolia and Central Lambton. I'm so proud that our government is making such a historic investment in CE Hospital, ensuring its future for generations to come. And I want to thank the government and the Ministry of Health for this important investment in Samuel Lambton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member from London, Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. I want to shine a light on a remarkable initiative in our community, the HOME Home Program from the London Inner Community Health Centre. 
HOME, which stands for Health Outreach Mobile Engagement, is a lifeline for individuals who are experiencing homelessness, are in insecure housed, or are clients rostered at the centre. HOME started with a wagon and a few dedicated staff. The idea continued to grow, and now they operate from a specialized bus equipped to handle the needs of their patients. In its first year alone, HOME served 3,000 individuals just operating two days a week. What makes HOME truly special is a de dedicated team behind it. Nurses and social workers who go above and beyond, building meaningful relationships with those who they serve. This program meets a real need in our community. Accessing health care can be a nightmare for many, exasperated by primary care physician shortages and long ER wait times. London's housing crisis has been at the forefront of many conversations, from politicians to service providers, concerned citizens, and those struggling to find stable housing. This issue affects everyone in our community. Often, the ability to raise health care Receive health care means you have to be housed. Housing is linked to health care. That's why the HOME program is so important, and I want to thank the amazing team who worked so hard to make the HOME program possible. Because of your work, you improve the health outcomes and health equity for the most marginalized and vulnerable people in our community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you, Speaker. Colleagues, last Saturday I had the pleasure of attending the banquet for the 2024 Owen Sound Sports Hall of Fame inductees. It was an amazing night honoring local athletes, builders, and teams. Formed in 1981, the Owen Sound Sports Hall of Fame is dedicated to the people who have participated in local sports, either as participants or as builders. This year's inductees were an amazing group of local sports heroes. Athletes included pioneering lacrosse and hockey star Rochelle Walker, three-time Canadian lacrosse champion Ted Abbott, star softball pitcher and coach Jamie Simpson, National Lacrosse League player Adam Jones, 600-game NHL player Adam Mayer, and Owen Sound Gray's MVP James McClellan. Builder inductees were soccer builder, coach and referee Colin Hodson, minor sport player, coach, referee, umpire, league administrator and fundraiser Norm Long, and minor hockey, baseball, lacrosse and bowling coach Jim Tennant. And team inductees were the 1966 Owen Sound Crescent Club softball champions, the 1981 Owen Sound Kinsman Junior A box lacrosse team, and the 28 Shark Tank APA World Champions. Thank you and congratulations to all inductees for your great success and your great contribution to the Owen Sound community. Member Statements. The member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. When Premier Ford announced his government's plans to private surgeries, privatize surgeries and diagnostics, he promised that Ontarians would never have to pay with their credit card, only their OHIP card. We knew the promises were empty words. When you open the door to profit, care takes a backseat. The reality is that more Ontarians are paying out of their pocket for health care services that are covered under OHIP. Kate, a small business owner in Toronto, had to pay close to $8,000 for extra tests and eye surgery at a private clinic. She says, at no time ever was I told any of this was covered under OHIP. This was not a cosmetic procedure. This was a necessity. I could not function without it. Maureen from London was told she would have to wait years un unless she paid out of pocket for her surgery. She paid $7,000. She says, being a senior on fixed income, I'm still trying to catch up with bills from this surgery. Mike's wife was also told she would have to wait years for her surgery. Get this, when the clinic called to schedule the appointment, it turned out to be the same surgeon that did her first operation in the hospital four years earlier. He now had a private clinic. Mike says, my wife got the surgery done at the for-profit clinic and it cost $3,000 more than when it was done at the hospital. We have one question, who is supposed to protect us from such scams? The race to the bottom of health care continues under this Ford government. Speaker, care should be based on need, not on ability to pay. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kitchener, South Hester. 
Thank you, Speaker. Um, I'm, uh, I'm standing today to talk about uh, the uh, rather exciting past few weeks I've had uh, from the perspective of culmination of, of personal projects. Um, I've said many times that I, I came here because of my focus on crime prevention, and I've really seen that recognized in the last few weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, we saw a $150,000 investment in the fourth R of the Faculty of Education in Western, which puts a um, curriculum module into Ontario high schools that allows uh, students to uh, and middle schools to focus on building healthy relationships with a particular focus on gender-based violence. Um, and then just last Friday, the Minister of Education and myself were at the Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton to announce what I think is safe to say is a, a groundbreaking investment, $875,000 into the Coaching Boys into Men program, which will allow, thank you, <laughs> which will uh, allow 23 separate violence against women agencies throughout the province to certify 400 coaches and teachers at over 200 high schools on basically how to uh, give young men and boys the tools uh, that they need to become uh, willing allies in the fight to combat violence against women. Um, it was an incredibly exciting announcement. This has been uh, a lot of, of personal advocacy on my part. Couldn't have done it without education, without Justin and Kenan, but also thank you so much to Sue Taylor, Dr. Peter Jaffe, Dr. Claire Crook. Dr. David Wolf and Ray Hughes, and I'm looking forward to continuing working with all of you. Thank you so much again. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Canada, Carleton. Thank you. Speaker, I had the pleasure to meet with civics classes at All Saints and Earl of March secondary schools in my riding. It's such a pleasure to meet such smart young people learning about the democracy that will affect the rest of their lives. They ask such good questions. Students today are informed, active, and they know that what is happening in government is important. They know that asking the right questions is the first step to making change. Only with smart people asking smart questions do we get a government that is accountable, that is responsive to our needs, and that invests in people for a better future for all. There are people who intentionally make politics ugly because they don't want people paying attention. So please, like I told those students, stay informed, stay active, keep asking those good questions, and when the time comes, vote, like your life depends upon it, because it does. Member Statements, the member for Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, each year on the first Sunday of May, Canadians come together to commemorate the Battle of the Atlantic, lasting from September 1939 until April 1945. The Battle of the Atlantic was the longest continuous battle of the Second World War. Canada played a critical role in this battle, which ultimately helped secure the Allied victory. Through Canada, though Canada entered the war, a small country with a small, very even smaller navy, we quickly grew into the major fleet. Canadian ships escorted hundreds of convoys that set off from Nova Scotia and hunted U-boats in the Atlantic. Over 4,000 Canadian soldiers, merchant mariners, and airmen lost their lives in the battle, along with over 100 civilians. On May the 15th, I had the honour of attending the Battle of the Atlantic Parade and Commemoration Ceremony hosted by the Oxford County Naval Veterans Association. Unfortunately, it was looking like rain, so the parade didn't take place, but I was grateful to be there to commemorate those who lost their lives in this grueling battle. May the 5th also happens to be Dutch Liberation Day. Oh. This day marks the liberation of the Netherlands by the Allied forces made mostly of Canadian troops. Events like these encourage us to reflect on Canadian involvement in World War II and remember the courageous sacrifices of those who served to secure our freedom. I'd like to express my gratitude to the Oxford <coughs> County Naval Veterans Association for ho hosting this event in honour of our brave Canadian forces and veterans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Well, thank you very much, Speaker, and it is my pleasure today to rise to congratulate Home Hardware as they mark 60 years of serving communities across Canada. In fact, the Premier recently joined me to visit their headquarters in St. Jacobs after we picked up apple fritters from the farmer's market, of course. 
So how did that single store in St. Jacobs grow to become a national symbol? Well, here's how, Speaker. They kept their commitment to help build their communities with helpful advice, quality products, and great customer service. This milestone is a testament to over six decades of dedication and hard work by our dealers and team members across the country, said Kevin McNabb, President and CEO of Home Hardware Stores Limited. Since opening in St. Jacobs, they now have more than 1,000 stores providing good jobs across the country. It's hard to picture small towns in Ontario without a home hardware. They have become a part of the fabric of our community and country. Home hardware is consistently chosen as one of Canada's top employers and received the honour from Forbes again in 2024. So congratulations on 60 years and thank you for the positive contributions to our community, Ontario and Canada. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.